So today I want to talk about planning to succeed. Well, of course you plan to succeed. Of course you want to succeed. Aha! I think the key here is to understand that wanting, planning, and doing are three different things. So the first one is that you want to succeed. Yes, you do. Have you got a definite goal? Have you got it clearly stated to yourself? Can you envision what it looks like when you have reached it? Great start. Great start. Now you can plan on how you're going to reach that goal. But we're going to go one step further. I want to address planning to succeed while you are reaching your goal. Now, what this means is that there are things that get in our way of success, and it's, you, it's us. <laughs> and if we can prepare ourselves to, oh, to be able to address issues that come up within ourselves, how's the best way to me and put this? You know what? If I believe I can do it, I know I can, but how about we define what that looks like? Let's do it that way. So what are some things that can get in our way, personally, right? It's just who we are. Well, I'm going to go back to Think and Grow Rich. It's a lovely book. It is a, I always call it the cliff notes of the full course Law of Success, both of which I've read, both of which I've studied and in some cases have taught. So having said that, let's go there because Napoleon Hill lays out numerous, about 31 actually, reasons why you may not succeed. And the purpose of this is to prepare ourselves. This is what I believe. I believe that if I know how to respond to something before it happens, I'm prepared. And it makes that experience better for me. I can learn from it. I can move past it. I can get around it. I can go forth, right? So this is what this is about. Let's plan to succeed by recognizing there might be some things that come along to stop us. And by recognizing them and preparing for them, they aren't going to stop us. All right, so let's take a look at one of them. Unfavorable hereditary background. All right, so this is Napoleon Hill saying that, you know what, if you have some kind of deficiency of brain power, maybe because of a disability or some sort, there's not much you can do about that physically. But that doesn't have to hinder you from succeeding. I want you to think about that for a second. With access to the Internet, with access to information, stories, facts, data. I can show you a story where a young man with Down syndrome became the owner of a restaurant. And as the owner, he is learning how to have the right people in place to serve as customers, to have the right people in place to make sure the business runs smoothly and is profitable. Yes, he had guidance. Yes, he had people around him that said, yo, you want to own a restaurant? That's wonderful. Let's do it. Knowing that you really don't have the mental capacity to create a full-blown financial plan, let's get a financial expert in on this. Knowing that you don't have a full capacity to understand and be able to outline a full marketing effort, let's bring in a marketing expert. Knowing that you do have the mental capacity and the ability to train servers to put the customer first, let's do that. So even with being born with a hereditary mental issue, right, the capability of, of the brain, we can prepare for it and we can work around it. All right, so uh, another 
thing that can keep us from success is the lack of a well-defined purpose in life. This goes beyond the goal you're going for. This is understanding who you are and why you do the things you do so that, so that they can help propel you forward and you get into the right spaces and you are around the right people for you. It also affects the kind of goal that you set. So for instance, would be for me. I know without a shadow of a doubt that one of my guiding values is the importance of knowledge and education. I truly believe that knowledge and education are foundational. They are the foundation for personal freedom. Knowing this has helped me to really define where I am going in my business. Before I recognized this and before I knew this, I was drawn to doing things as a hobby, doing things as a in my in work, some things, right, that were related to the gathering of knowledge, educating myself, helping others to understand the data and the information that was put in front of them. And there were jobs that I had that were lousy for me, terrible jobs. I should never have been in them because not one piece of that job involved learning something new and making sure somebody else understood the new knowledge. Um, I didn't stay at those very long, did I? But I didn't really have that as a guiding vision, as a guiding foundation to help me to understand to make better decisions. I didn't have that. I do now. And it was with the help of other people. It was with the help of people listening to me and me kind of talking out loud, sounding boards, right? Of my putting things out in front of them in text, uh, you know, as I'm thinking of this, it's kind of resonating with me of them asking me questions, right? And what that did was that prepared me for today. When I have people come to me with collaboration opportunities, joint ventures, business partnerships, and I look at it and I say, this doesn't quite feel right. It sounds really good. Sounds really good. Sounds like we're going to make a lot of money. But it doesn't feel quite right. I don't have to wonder why it doesn't feel right. Honestly, that's how much I firmly believe in the, in the value of knowledge and education. I just have to look to see who is it going to help to learn something new that will help them move forward in their life. Nobody? Oh, well, then I don't want to be a part of it. Boom. Okay. See, I'm prepared. I don't have to waste my time. How about um, insufficient education? You can prepare for that. The minute you recognize that you don't have enough education about something, you can get it. This doesn't mean that you have to enroll in a university or a college. This doesn't mean that you have to go back to school, so to speak. Although it could. It could. It also doesn't mean that you have to be by yourself and wondering, well, what is it that I need to learn? Where should I learn it? No, it doesn't mean that at all. What it means is that let's recognize that, you know, as you move closer to your vision, to your goal, you're going to see that there are some things you're going to have to educate yourself about. Now, you may not want to do it now, but you want to be prepared for that moment when it comes. Oh, for instance, when you become a business owner, it is very important that you understand how to read a basic profit and loss statement. And it's not just reading the numbers. I'm talking about understanding it. Now, having somebody else put that P&L sheet in front of you, that's fine. That's fine. That's why you hire experts, right? But it's important that you know your numbers and understand them. And I say that because... If you just have, well, I made this much money and this much money um, was spent on operating the business, that means I have this much I can pay myself. It's not going to help you in making better decisions about how to streamline your business, how to extract more profit in a particular area. Maybe there's an area that's actually sucking out profits and you can't see it because you don't understand how to read that statement. 
Now, do you need to run out right now and learn how to read a P&L sheet? I don't know. Where are you in your business? But can you plan for, for learning it? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can put that on your timeline of where you are in your business now. Maybe it's next month. Maybe it's, oh, you know what? I want to do that this year, so I'm going to keep an eye out for a webinar, for a presentation. Maybe I'll ask a couple of my friends who they know, who are they using. Maybe, you know, if, you're, if you've got a bookkeeper or a tax person, you just call them and say, listen, I really want to learn how to read a P&L sheet. Can't do it right now, but can I plan for it in about six months, in about two months? Maybe you haven't started your business yet at all, and you've got too much going on. So, you know you're going to need to learn how to do that. So you can prepare yourself for when the time comes that you can educate yourself. One last thing you have to worry about. And just because I want to keep this short and sweet, I'm not going through all 31 of these, but I will say that one of the things that can get in our way and we have control over and we can conquer and that we can prepare for is lack of self-discipline. Now what's really funny is that those who are athletes or who are very good at something in particular the first thing that we say is oh, i have self-discipline good night did you see how much effort and time i put forth focused on learning that skill or bettering that skill mm -hmm. what about the other things in your life though did that self-discipline translate well into other areas now i'm not saying that you have to be self-disciplined in absolutely every area of your life. This is what I'm saying, though. You now have a specific goal that you are going after. And you have been able to focus attention enough in a specific area that you've shown you can have self-discipline. That's wonderful because it says you can. It's time to take a look at how you're going to be able to move that self-discipline skill that you already have and make sure that it's in place now so that you are planning for your success. It is a matter of standing in front of the mirror and feeling like you're looking at your greatest enemy. That's when you know that it's time to take a look at your habits, and what you're doing or not doing. Something's getting in your way and will definitely, definitely get in your way. It will be magnified as you start moving towards the attainment of that goal. Now, I have to tell you, just these simple handful of things that I've talked about, I've experienced them. And in some capacity, I've been able to pull myself up by the bootstrap and just keep moving forward and tackle them. But I have to tell you, it's been a heck of a lot easier. I've grown faster. And I've prepared and acted better because I was a member of a group that wanted help. So what that means is that when I would go to a meeting and I would say, I was doing so great. I was on fire. Oh, my word. I'm here to tell you. Every single morning, I was drinking my water. I was doing my light exercise. It was during the summer. I, I actually, every weekday morning, by 7 o'clock, I was on the golf course. I walked a nine-hole course. I had it to myself. Uh, in my area, it was like six bucks. <laughs> so don't think that I was spending tons of money. But it was a wonderful flat nine-hole course. Got home, showered, ready for the day, feeling great, and three weeks have gone by and I haven't done that. And I'm not sure what the heck's going on, what's going on. The group allowed me some time to just kind of say out loud some of the things that started happening about four weeks ago that distracted me and that I allowed to get in the way of a habit that I was forming. And they gave me some pointers. 
And they said, you know what? It's time for you to take care of the distractions that are getting in your way because they keep showing up. It's time for you to address them. And it's time for you to get back again into a quiet state and visualize your end goal. Get in touch with why you set that goal to begin with. Get in touch with it. And then I learned that, <clears throat> all right, it's good for me to go to my safe place inside and be in a quiet space while I do it, to meditate and to pray because it works for me. Once I saw why I was distracting myself because I didn't think I was worth achieving that goal. You see, I was on my way to getting it. And it was like, well, wait a minute, who are you to go after something like this? Yes, it's simple, but guess what? It stopped me. Okay. So how do I change that thinking? I talked with somebody and I asked them, what did you do <laughs> to think differently? And I started doing some things and within, oh, about a week or so, I mean, I physically started just doing it again. I said, oh, it doesn't matter what I think, feel, or believe, it's time for me to take action, and I will continue to take action until my thoughts and my feelings catch up. And that's basically what I did. But I didn't want to have to deal with that one again. Yeah, well, I did, um, and I did it again. Sometimes it really does, for me, this is what I learned, it really does boil down to, it doesn't matter what I think, feel, or believe at the moment, I know that the right action to take needs to be taken. I will deal with the feelings later. I will deal with the thinking later. Let's take the action. Everything else will follow, and it does. So that's been proven to me, and where did I learn that? I learned that in a group of people that were interested in my success, and I was interested in theirs. This is how we can begin to plan for our success. We take a look at what could possibly be in our way personally, as well as outside, right? We all know that we can plan for success. If, if we want to plan a trip around the country in an RV, one way to plan for success is to make sure that we have enough money for fuel, for food and incidentals along the way, that the vehicle is been looked over, that we have spare parts. If we know ahead of time that specific areas will fall apart, we have those spare parts available. You see, we have all that. So let's do that with our internal stuff. All right. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, have a great day.